we'll just talk briefly about four levels of competence. Okay, so let's come in here. We've got unconscious incompetent. I call that ignorance is bliss. I don't know that I don't know. And again, from a trading perspective, my best life experience example is traders that started trading in 97, 98, 99, bought retracements, bought breakouts, and made millions. Unconscious incompetence. They weren't traders. They were just participating in the biggest bull market in history. Then markets peaked March 2000, right in that area. Okay? And very quickly, they moved to a period or a point in their development of conscious incompetence. Ha, man, now I know that I don't know. I can't just buy breakouts anymore. Now we're seeing what we call false breakouts. The market's going down faster than it went up. And at this point, this is where we start to move back inside of ourselves. That's where the internal dialogue turns negative. We start to have self-doubt. Maybe I'm really not a trader. Maybe I didn't know what I was doing. So we tend to seek information at that point. We want to learn more. Then we go from there to conscious competence. Now I've read more books. I understand technical analysis. I understand a stochastic can be used to buy and to sell. I know now that markets do actually go down. Although if you looked at a chart from 97 to 2000, it'd be hard to convict anybody of that. More importantly, I've been paid handsomely for buying pullbacks or buying breakouts. And so that's my current conditioning. The downside to conscious competence is that it requires thinking outside of ourselves. We have to gather the data and then think about it and process it before we can act on it. The upside to conscious competence is that it's the final level before we reach you see, unconscious competence. So how do we get from here to there? Repetition. Now, most traders that I meet are not here. Most traders are here, conscious incompetence, or conscious competence. I know that I don't know, and my account reflects it because my equity curve is going straight south. And now the pain is such that I'm tired of doing that. Okay, so when we think about changing habits, changing what's gone on in the past, we typically have to be met with pain. We move away from that pain. Same thing happens in trading. So if I told a trader that in order to go from conscious competence to unconscious competence with one system, it's going to require somewhere around 300 repetitions. And then everybody here knows people who will do whatever it takes to get those repetitions in. We all know people, underachievers, overachievers, in any area of our life ever. If we've ever been involved with anything where there's any sense of competition. Okay? We were told to do a report. You're going to return or turn that report in six weeks from today. I want you to do the report on X. Okay? There's no ambiguity. Here's the date it's due. Here's the content I want you to do it on. Here's the format that has to be done in. Some people have it done one week later, and now they're ready to go rock and roll and play and have fun for the next five weeks or move on to other tasks. Other people play and rock and roll for the next five weeks, and then they come down, and finally the pain is so overwhelming. If I don't turn this in in the next seven days, then I, conditional, am going to fail this part, and this is responsible for 25% of my entire grade in this course. I better get to it. And then the whole time while I'm cramming to study for the test, the internal dialogues, you idiot, why didn't you just start this earlier? My God, you always do this. Well, of course I do, because it's a habit. It started out initially as, you know, I really don't want to do that. I'm moving towards pleasure. There's so many other things I'd rather do with my time. And then it moves closer and closer and closer to the deadline. Now it becomes moving away from pain. And finally, the pain of not having it done becomes so overwhelming that now I'm forced to take action. Perspective says, I may not like that backtesting thing in the trading plan development. Come on, man, that's not why I joined this thing or got involved with the markets. I'm not making any money when I'm backtesting. 
trading plan development isn't fun. It's funner to look at charts, and it's funner to go try to find patterns and be awed by the way that 1618 or 127. Yeah, but is it moving you towards your So if we go back and say 300 repetitions, in my mind, then the only question is, how quickly can I get those repetitions in? If I go do 50 repetitions in one market, and then I do that in five additional markets, I can do 50 signals in six markets, bam, there's my 300. I can do 300 in one market. I can do 103 markets. Or I can do 50 and then get bored and then go start looking at something else and disrupt my process. And so the gap between conscious competence and unconscious competence is never closed. And I'm in a constant state of partial repetition and then up choose to insert something else. Oh, okay, what I just inserted didn't work. There's another week and a half of my life gone. Another week and a half of trading missed opportunity. And in finance, you know, there is something called opportunity cost, time value of money. If the model made $1,000 last week and I didn't participate because I was out doing other stuff, then that's $1,000 lost. Then when you take that $1,000 and consider the effect that it can have on the money management and position sizing, then it becomes dramatic. But I don't want to beat myself up about that. I just want to say, okay, I've learned from that. Now let's get back on track. There are four stages of learning required for mastery of any skill. Stage one, unconscious incompetence, or ignorance is bliss. Conscious incompetence, I know that I don't know what I'm doing. Conscious competence, I figured it out, but I need some help. Unconscious competence, I know what I'm doing and don't have to think about it, I just do it. A select portion of the population is self-motivated and able to achieve goals directly through conscious effort and drive. But most people, however, learn through a mistake-driven and pain-motivated process in every area of their lives. Whether a new diet or getting serious about our trading careers, we only move forward when the doctor tells us we have weeks to live. In the life of a trader, the doctor is our account statement at the end of the month. Our EKG is our equity curve. When the money is gone, it's gone forever. Important elements of the conscious incompetence and conscious competence stage require identifying goals and establishing that trading can be exciting and adventurous, but the ultimate end is profitability. There is one and only one path to profitability in the markets and success in any field, sports, professional, or otherwise. Old destructive habits need to be identified, analyzed, and replaced with new habits that directly affect the path to success, which is profit for traders. Mm -hmm.